Wonderful. So uh, now we're going to hear a, a, a talk by Mihaila Jovanovic from USC about learning model-free LQR using a random search technique. Uh, thank you, Ben. Thanks for putting this exciting event together and for bringing uh, friends and colleagues, uh, uh, at least virtually. So as Ben mentioned, I'll be talking about uh, convergence and sample complexity of a random search method for model three linear quadratic regulator. And this is a joint work with my student Hessam and uh, our friend uh, Magdi. And uh, the LQR problem is a uh, standard topic in control theory. It goes back to 60s and it involves uh, minimization of a quadratic objective function for linear dynamical systems. So there are many versions of this problem, but the simplest instance uh, is given by uh, linear time invariant systems where state vector evolves according to the state equation here with an infinite horizon. Horizon, and uh, uh, we consider continuous time problem in which evolution of the state vector is governed by this first order differential equation in the presence of control input u with a random initial condition x naught. So matrices A and B are constant matrices that determine model parameters, and these matrices Q and R are positive definite matrices that uh, specify state and control weights. So I need to emphasize that minimization is done over all state and control trajectories, and the globally optimal solution is given by this linear state feedback policy, which tells you essentially that at every time instant you form control action by acting on the vector of available state measurements with a fixed matrix K. And this matrix K can be obtained from a positive definite solution of the algebraic Riccati equation. And this unique positive definite solution exists under mild system theoretic conditions. So the challenge that arises in modern setup is that you very often don't have access to model parameters. Namely, in order to compute solution of algebraic Riccati equation, you need these matrices A and B, and they may not be available. So the question is then what to do in, in a situation like this. And one way perhaps to approach this problem is to use data in an attempt to identify model parameters and then to move from there. And Ben and his group uh, have taught us in recent years how this should be done properly. An alternative approach that we are going to take is to, to attempt to learn feedback policy by optimizing over feedback gain matrices. And uh, you can easily express LQR cost as a function of feedback gain. And this approach received actually lots of attention in the last couple of years. And effort has focused on establishing convergence and statistical properties of gradient-based techniques. And these are challenging questions for two reasons. First of all, it, it's a standard fact that LQR cost is a non-convex function of the feedback gain matrix. And in the absence of models, you have a burden of establishing statistical properties, namely sample complexity of your optimization-based techniques. And uh, you know, the next slide very briefly summarizes what we've done in this area. We considered the random search method for model free LQR and we established linear convergence over the set of stabilizing feedback gains and uh, logarithmic sample complexity with respect to the reciprocal of the desired accuracy. So in the remaining remainder of my talk, what I would like to do is to, to tell you what we mean by random search method. I'll tell you what we've done and also how our results compare to the state of the art in this uh, rapidly emerging area. And what I would like to highlight is that our results hold with, with high probability, as you will see in a moment. So, so very briefly, uh, what allows you to establish linear convergence of gradient descent is smoothness and gradient dominance property of the LQR cost over its sublevel sets. And uh, the way you should think of gradient dominance is really PL type of a condition that relaxes strong convexity and extends this to a broader, broader class of functions still allowing you to establish linear convergence. And these two properties have been utilized in a res recent work by UW group to, to prove global uh, convergence of, of uh, gradient descent, global over the set of stabilizing feedback gain. Uh, for, for gains for, for discrete time systems. And we have provided an alternative proof that utilizes standard uh, system theoretic uh, convex reparameterization for continuous time systems. And this was reported last year at, at CDC. The challenge is that 
uh, when you don't have a model, you don't have an access to gradients. Namely, you can only access random function values, perhaps by running experiment or by uh, asking your friends who are domain experts to allow you access to their simulation engine. Perhaps they would uh, give you a luxury of running computational or simulation experiments without telling you what is under the hood. And in this setup, you, you, you can provide a current value of the feedback gain and an initial condition in order to obtain a random value of the LQR cost. And then the, the real LQR cost is obtained by computing expectation over uh, initial conditions, which we assume to be zero mean uri, uh, unit variance with bounded uh, sub, sub Gaussian norm. And uh, this slide summarizes really what we mean by random search method for model free LQR. So what random search method attempts to do is to emulate gradient descent by using essentially random function values uh, in order to, to estimate the gradient. And we are, we are not using a random search, uninformed search direction. We are tapping into the area of derivative free or zero order optimization and a couple of alternative approaches of how you can compute uh, grad gradient estimate using a single sample are given here. This first expression is so-called two-point gradient estimate, with, which may remind you of a central difference scheme from numerical analysis. What differentiates two-point scheme from one-point scheme is that you have ability to compute uh, a random value of the cost, cost function for two different values of the feedback gain, but with the same initial condition. And obviously this may be challenging in experiments, but if you have an access to simulation engine, you can perhaps do it. In contrast to that, in one point estimate, you, you can evaluate objective function at one particular gain, gain for, for, for one initial condition. There is significant difference between them. It's the standard fact that two point gradient schemes reduce variance. What I would like to highlight is that you need to be a little bit careful here in how you choose these random matrices U, which are assumed to, to be uniformly distributed over sphere and this smoothing uh, parameter R, because you need to guarantee closed loop stability and all of these issues are addressed in, in our paper. Of course, in applications, you, you are not bound to using a single sample. You can use multiple samples by perhaps utilizing mini batch gradient estimate. This would require running multiple simulations. And then the relevant question becomes, how, how many samples and how many iterations you need in order for your random search method to emulate properties of, of gradient descent. And uh, this slide summarizes the main contribution of, of our work. What uh, HESA managed to show is that if you use random search uh, uh, method for model free LQR, you can achieve desired accuracy epsilon with high probability uh, under the following upper bound for, for the for, for total number of iterations. So T has to be a uh, logarithmic, logarithmic function of the reciprocal of the desired accuracy. And the number of samples per iteration that you that you, you need to utilize is proportional to the state dimension. So N here denotes the number of components in your state vector, for example, for standard mass spring system, N would be two. So there is also this logarithmic dependence, but that's, that's inconsequential. Uh, I'd like to highlight that in contrast to other results in the literature, uh, this bound on N uh, does not depend on epsilon. C is a constant that depends on, on problem parameters, but it is not a function of the, of the uh, desired accuracy. And sample complexity is given by a product between T and N. And obviously the result that we establish here is that sample complexity is proportional, linearly scales with the problem dimension with the number of states and logarithmically with uh, one over epsilon. So, and uh, all details are contained in our archive uh, preprint. Uh, conference publication only summarizes high level points. So I don't have unfortunately too much time to, to tell you how, how this compares to state of the art in this literature, but let me just very briefly highlight the impressive paper by UC Berkeley group where they uh, compared one and two point gradient estimates. They managed to, to establish polynomial sample complexity, sublinear convergence rate with decreasing step size. This is really an impressive work that opened our eyes at many different levels and inspired us actually to closely examine 
two-point gradient uh, estimate. And then uh, what they also managed to show, and this builds on, on the, the work of U University of Washington group, that if instead of using single uh, sample, you, you utilize mini batch gradient estimate with one point scheme, you can have polynomial complexity in terms of one over epsilon with a linear rate of convergence and a fixed step size. So one way to establish these results is to try to control uh, the, uh, uh, the gradient estimation error. And this is what not what we do in our in 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 our approach. In in our approach, key feature of our proof is really that we don't try to control gradient estimation error. Rather, we exploit the problem structure and utilize tools from non-asymptotic statistics to to show that gradient estimate concentrates with high probability when pro projected to the direction of the gradient. And all of our results hold for two point. Um, estimates. So, so the way we managed to show this is that rather than using gradient descent, we utilize actually approximate gradient descent, namely it's a standard fact in optimization that you can achieve linear convergence with fixed step size as long as your direction has large enough uh, projection in the direction of the true gradient and as long as its norm is not too big relative to the norm of the true gradient. Obviously this holds in deterministic setup and in our work we showed that these two events hold with high probability. So again, all details are contained in the paper, but let me just give you an indication of what, what our results demonstrate from applied point of view. Here I consider uh, mass spring uh, a bunch of cards that are connected by springs and dampers with inverted pendula on the top of them. Each card has a force control. And the objective here is to design LQR in an offline fashion, I have to emphasize. So everything here is done in an offline fashion using uh, around certain operating point. And what these two plots here show is essentially histograms of uh, these two events that we want to hold with high probability. And this is uh, obviously, you know, with, with the probability of uh, 0.994 and probability 995, if you, you know, choose these parameters, theta one and theta two properly, you, 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 you have this. So, and we have linear convergence with a smooth curve. Uh, the, the, there are no, no, you know, stochastic oscillations that are typical for, for, uh, st uh, stochastic algorithms. So what I would like to highlight is that there are many open challenges in this area. One of them arises in the area of structured feedback synthesis, where perhaps you would like to utilize limited information exchange between your different subsystems and you want to promote sparsity in the feedback game. This is a non-smooth problem and uh, the question open, it's an open question of how many of these things that we establish here extend to this setup and obviously dynamic feedback synthesis is a, is a big open challenge for reinforcement learning. The most important slide, all credit goes to Hesam and Magdi, they are fantastic. They've done all heavy lifting. I'm here just to approve their message and uh, uh, credit also goes to Fred and uh, Kishan for supporting this 